Okay, so to introduce myself, no, I first want to thank Anthony actually for organizing these uh, meetings and also the whole program on career readiness and for advocating um, that this notion of all these career activities in school are put on a global agenda of attention and that they are crucial for preparing young people for uh, the future of work. So a big thank you to Anthony for taking on all this hard work to, to, to really highlight the crucial role of these activities, which he has done throughout all his work so far. And in my own research, so about myself, I'm, uh, my name is Ingrid Schoen. I'm a um, professor of, at the Social Science Research Institute at uh, University College London, which, and our department actually houses, hosts, and manages the UK cohort data, which are also large scale longitudinal studies of individuals born in different decades like uh, the 1958, 1970, the millennium, and following up these individuals over time to enable researchers and policymaker to get evidence on how lives change in a changing context. And uh, some of these surveys also have information on uh, career preparation programs, but as Anthony said, not in a very good format or not very extensive questions. And I hope that um, all these initiatives can contribute also to include more questions in this uh, survey so that we have better insights. Yeah. And in my own presentation uh, today, which is, uh, I will report uh, findings of a project which I conduct together with Golo Hensikel. And Golo cannot be here today because he's on honeymoon and he's away with his new wife. So he sends his apologies, but uh, I will report back to him. And I will report on a study that um, took place in the UK during the COVID pandemic. So it is one of the uh, studies that enables us to some insight into the experiences of young people during this time of economic upheaval and uncertainty. Because the COVID pandemic affected every aspect of young people's lives. It disrupted their education. There were school closures, learning opportunities were disrupted. There was a destruction of their employment opportunities and career prospects because young people were the first to uh, let go. They were less likely had a chance to get this furlough money to the bridging money. So they faced all these um, challenges, which of course undermined their health and well-being and also brought changes to outlook to the future. But if we want to understand the situation of young people today, we also have to consider that even before the pandemic, there were all these uh, ongoing challenges to young people's career transitions, in particular the rising precarious and temporary employment uh, contracts they were offered, very often zero hour contracts. And uh, so there were all these challenges as well as rising levels of young people not in education, employment or trading, which is also called need. And, um, oops, what is this? This is not, <laughs> oh. oops. So I have to, I don't know <laughs> what to do. Uh, let's see, well, here we yeah, go. So, okay, so I'm going here. So it's the COVID pandemic and the economic situation. And so the issue I will be addressing in this issue, in this presentation is whether schools can prepare young people for an uncertain economic future during the COVID pandemic and focus on the role of school mediated employment activities. And the study is guided by assumptions from career development series, suggesting that career readiness can improve, can be improved through appropriate career related uh, guidance. And in one of our um, studies, we also found that these school based um, career development activities can indeed uh, increase career readiness and uh, reduce uncertainty about uh, their careers. 
and it also can increase general life satisfaction. But the question to ask in particular is whether um, the this, this school mediated employment activities can enable a smooth transition into the labor market and help young people to avoid need. And also if these uh, activities are in particular relevant for young people from uh, relative uh, dis disadvantaged backgrounds. And so this study will contribute to the evidence on the social inequalities in participation in um, career uh, preparation activities. It will also look at, for example, regional variations, and it will provide some of the scarce evidence on the relationship between uh, school mediated employment activities and um, later labor market outcomes. And um, so the data primary, our primary data source is not based on the, co uh, the cohort studies, but on the youth economic activities and health monitor, which is um, a quarterly panel quota sample, and um, which actually uses these samples stratified by gender, region, and employment status from Ipsos Mori to, to achieve a nationally representative sample. And uh, these data were collected over a number of time points during the pandemic, seven waves of data collection, so that we get an overview of uh, experiences of young people in these difficult time periods. We had about 1,000 participants per wave and um, about 45% wave on wave retention, but always at each wave, there were refresher samples to make up uh, the rest and again to give us ideally a nationally representative sample. And uh, also based on some guidance from Anthony, we have actually quite a relevant measure of uh, school mediated employment engagement based on questions where young people were asked about a range of, of activities. With the question, some schools and colleges arrange for their students to participate in activities with employers or local business people. And then we covered um, four work-based activities comprising participation in internships or work experience, workplace visits or job shadowing, being mentored or taking part in enterprise competitions and challenges. And we have three school-based uh, activities, such as um, um, getting careers advice from either teachers or special um, trained advisors, where there was any training on how to write your CV or do interviews, and also taking part in classrooms, discussions about job prospects or employment. And um, then, of course, we looked at the distribution of these different activities, and we find that young people in the UK, they actually had the benefit of quite a substantial amount of school medi mediated school employer employment uh, engagement, and that the median respondent reported about six employer engagements, which is quite a lot. But I should say that there are plans or there are, is now a legislation which is implemented gradually requiring schools to provide career training and to offer at least six activities. So it basically means the schools are doing quite a good job in providing these activities and students take part in them. We also see that school-based employer engagement is more common than work-based engagement, but we see that for about 60% about participated in, in internships or work experiences. About half of the students um, had workplace visits and uh, um, about 40% had these other activities. Of course, the school-based activities, they were uh, uh, engaged in by the majority of um, students. And only about 10% in the sample recalled, recalled no school mediated engagement at all. But there were variations uh, ranging from 14% um, in the school based activities up to 22% in the work based uh, activities. So this is a picture of the 
participation. And then we looked at inequities in this participation using, in this case, a Poisson regression, which gives us some indication how each of these activities could contribute to changes uh, in, in, um, in the, in the oh, sorry, in the participation or is related to each of the risk factors. And we see that, uh, for example, there are these persisting inequalities that uh, students from university educated parents were more likely to participate in these um, engagement activities but also are uh, young people who received free school meals, which is often uh, understood as an indicator of disadvantage or social status. But on the other hand, and also ethnic minority kids uh, were more likely to participate in the, at least in the work-based uh, uh, activities. But uh, students who are low, lower attainers, i.e. those who didn't get the certificate of um, general certificate of secondary education, were less likely to participate as were females. And we also saw these regional variations that uh, young people in London were more likely to participate in these training uh, activities than uh, other and young people in other regions. And um, in the next step, moving on from this, so there are these persisting inequalities in participation, but um, does um, participation in these activities help us to um, reduce the risk of need? And in this case, we focus only on those who have left education or who were age 20, so that we could see if past uh, career training ability, uh, activities contributed to experience of need, subsequent experience of need, and about 11% in our uh, sample had experienced need. And then if we look at uh, to what extent can these activities uh, reduce or in increase uh, or reduce the risk of uh, being need, we see that uh, for example, so sorry, just to look at uh, the predictors of need, we see that the usual risk factors apply and that um, low uh, children or young people with low educated parents, those who ever were in receipt of free school meal, low attainers and females, they all were more likely to experience need. But in the UK context, ethnic minority youth were less likely to experience need. There were no differentiations by region in this case. And we also can see once we enter school mediated employer activities into this um, equation that the risks didn't reduce that much. But we see that uh, participating in school mediated employer engagement reduced the risk of being need by about uh, 10%. So um, that is quite, uh, so each activity actually of these school mediated employer activities increased the risk by 10%. So that is quite a um, significant finding. But we also wanted to know whether it is particularly beneficial for um, vulnerable students. And here are the interactions of um, how the risk of need varies across the different vulnerable groups by levels of employer engagement. And here we differentiated by participation in uh, less than four engagement as low engagement and uh, high engagement as four plus activities. And that is something I think Anthony also <laughs> recommended in some of his publications as a key uh, number. So this is how we separated. And we see that uh, in particular those on uh, free school meals, that um, if they had uh, high levels of engagement, their risk of um, the need was considerably reduced. But we also find a reduction of need for those uh, with low educated parents also the low attainers, but also, also markedly amongst ethnic minority use. While amongst females, we see a conundrum that the more they participated in uh, employer activities, the higher the risk of need. And that is actually also related maybe to the previous presentation when you looked at um, 
these um, career preparation activities. And I think CTE is particular technical education. And so maybe it is the issue that some of these um, engagement activities, they were not actually fitting the, fem the, the interests of the women or they were not leading to more academic roles because uh, women generally are more academically inclined than young men. So I think it could be maybe these different explanations, but maybe you have some other suggestions of why there is this uh, strange effect of women who participate more in these school-based activities have faced a greater, greater risk of need. Even. But basically, these were all our findings. And so I come to the summary that uh, most young people participate in school-mediated employer engagement, including those from relative disadvantaged uh, background, particularly those with, um, who receive free school meals and ethnic minority status students. So schools actually do a good job also in, in providing the um, um, engagement to everybody. And that um, about, but we also see that about one in 10 did not recall any engagement. And um, that there are these variations that girls or women and those, the low attainers, were less likely to participate while those with highly educated parents and those who live in London were more likely to participate. And that is, uh, and that also we see that um, school mediated employer engagement can help young people to avoid need, in particular those from less privileged backgrounds. And so in conclusion, schools are doing a good job in offering these activities to students and school mediated career development activities also are effective in, uncer or in times of economic uncertainty and um, especially for the less privileged uh, students or young people. And so it is a crucial role for schools, colleges and universities to create these strong connections between education institutions and employers and for governments to support schools to deliver high quality career guidance and coordinated support that is relevant for uh, students from different backgrounds. And that was all I wanted to present. 